And welcome to Advantage Radio Ministries, and welcome to Second Chances here at Lift FM. This is our weekly program in which if you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then you do understand that our God is a God of a second chance, third chance, fourth chance, fifth chance. However, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, this is the number one reason we put this program on, is to bring people onto the program from all walks of life that the Lord has used their skills and abilities to be a blessing and to help others get set free just like they were. So if you don't know Jesus, but you've been seeking and searching, I've got wonderful news for you. If you are ready to be at that place in your life where you're ready to surrender to the Lord, we're going to give you an opportunity before this program is done to ask Jesus Christ to be the Lord of your life. But before we do that, we want to welcome to our program not one but two very special guests. We have Angie Smith and Dave Vitt. They are both uh, involved in I Am Ministries, and uh, lots of interesting stuff to talk about. I guess we'll start with uh, Angie first. Angie, f- for the sake of myself and all of our listeners, tell us a little bit about who you are. Okay. Well, first of all, thank you for having us on today. We appreciate this greatly. You're quite welcome. Thank you. And um, first off, I am a wife and a mother. I have been married to my husband, Brett, for what will be 20 years this coming January. And we have two beautiful daughters, uh, Cassidy, who is 17 and a senior in high school this year, and Charity, our 15-year-old, who is a sophomore. Um, I was raised in a rural community just south of Kansas City, Missouri. And I was raised in a Christian home. I was the youngest of three children. I went to both public and Christian schools uh, growing up, and then much later I attended Christian Bible College. Um, My whole family, though, while I was growing up, was active in our local church and in ministry, and serving God was just a way of life from as early as I can remember. I learned uh, growing up that, that our lives were created for God's glory, not for our own self fulfillment, but for God. And so that has just permeated all of my life. And outside of our own ministry, As I Am Ministries, which I hope to be talking with you more about here really soon, um, there still remains a deep desire in my heart to be involved in even my local church ministry, whether it's teaching ladies Bible studies or leading worship or even working with the kids in Bible school or children's church. I just have a deep desire to serve God just wherever I am. Now, I know you, you mentioned that uh, you, you came from a Christian home and different things, but was there ever a time in younger years where you said, you know what, I'm going to really get for, you know, I, I, I live for the Lord, but I'm going to get for real for Him. Was there ever that time in your life, Angie? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I was saved when I was six, so at a very tender young age, and, and so I hadn't had a hardened life that, that the Lord saved me out of. But, you know, when you're six years old, six, seven, eight, whatever those ages are, your relationship with the Lord is is tender and it's pure, but after you live some hard knocks of life, you've really got to get real and you've really got to own your faith. And and definitely uh, in my mid-high school years, my late high school years, uh, I really had some time with the Lord where the two of us had to get real with each other and say, okay, this is for real. What is life about? And Angie, I need your life to be about me. So definitely. Dave, tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay. Well, I'm a husband and a dad. I've been married to my wife, Davina, for a little over 25 years, and together we have two daughters. Amanda is 22, and our younger daughter is Amy, and she's 18 and just started college last week. I, too, was born and raised in a small rural farming community, the youngest of four kids. I just enjoyed typical small town things, hanging out at the drive-in, riding my bike around town, playing golf or doing anything athletic uh, with my friends. Later I went to pharmacy school at the University of Kansas, but really I didn't uh, fill prescriptions as a pharmacist. I spent the next 25 years as a medical writer and editor, not knowing at that time how that would play a big factor later on in this ministry with Angie. Um, Moved to Kansas City where I worked in the pharmaceutical industry for a number of years. Owned my own business for 11 years. It was about, I guess, 14 years ago that my path crossed uh, with Angie's as our daughters were attending the same preschool together. 
And then later our families attended the same church where Angie and I were each uh, teachers of our own Bible studies. And together we just served in any number of ways. So the the obvious question is, before we get into IM Ministries, I see that um, you had, as you mentioned, uh, you worked in the uh, uh, pharmaceutical profession for a number of years, but then you surrendered uh, to the call on God's life. So did you kind of surrender it all and leave the industry and, and go full-time into ministry, or what happened? Well, largely that was the case. I, I grew up in a Catholic home, attended Catholic schools and church, um, where I, I did learn to fear God, but I remained very biblically illiterate. Uh, to me, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John might as well have been the names of the four Beatles, because I just didn't know any better. Um, and it wasn't until many years later through the witnessing of um, my own sister, uh, who got saved when she was uh, 18, that I realized following the rules that I'd learned just didn't make me a good guy. Um, and I was 22 years old, and I surrendered to the Lord, believe it or not, in the bathroom of my apartment in college. Um, and ever since that time, I've just tried to grow in my knowledge of Him, my love for Him, and uh, serving Him any way I can. And my greatest passion, uh, above all things, is to teach God's Word and to help others grow in their knowledge and love for Him as well. Once you made that commitment, uh, Dave, to serve the Lord Jesus Christ with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, uh, what kind of significant changes happened in your life? Well, it, uh, it all began to make sense, to tell you the truth. Uh, all the pieces fit together for the first time. Um, I had been successful in, in much of life as the world would define it, uh, with, had a successful career, owned a very profitable and successful business, um, honestly, uh, once the Lord got a hold of me, my, my drive for that just uh, largely went away. And I, a few years ago, sold that business so that I could devote myself um, more full-time to ministry, um, including as I am. As the uh, ministry, as I am, ministries came together, you talked uh, a moment ago, David, about uh, how you and, and uh, Angie met. Angie, how did the ministry get started of As I Am Ministries? Well, um, it started as a teaching ministry. Uh, both Dave and I uh, taught different Bible study classes. I would teach women's Bible study classes. Dave was a full-time Sunday school teacher um, of uh, young families, and uh, I had been teaching women's Bible studies off and on for years, and during that time, I would often get requests to uh, write down thoughts from the lesson, write down the lessons, those type of things. But the truth is, um, although I have felt called by the Lord all the way since back when I was in high school um, to, to write and to go into ministry and do speaking and things such as that, I felt entirely inadequate. So for the better part of 20 years, I ran away from that calling, and um, I was still happy to teach classes here and there, uh, but to actually put pen to paper and publish my words and put it out there for the public was absolutely mortifying. And so uh, after putting it off for so long, the Lord just really um, kept prodding and kept prodding, and uh, a few years ago, I finally surrendered to that, uh, just still feeling entirely inadequate, but tired of running from the request from the Lord that he kept laying on my heart. And so at that time, I went ahead and began writing, and uh, that's when the writing of the Bible study that we're going to talk about with you today, James, Living a Life of Faith, that's when that book came to fruition, and it was during that writing process uh, when I was writing the Bible study and Dave used his editing skills from his years as a pharmaceutical editor um, to make that all come about. And it was at that time when all of the pieces fell together, and that is where As I Am Ministry started. So it started as a teaching ministry, and it still is a teaching ministry, but as we will get into, I'm sure, um, it has overflowed into many other areas as well, including uh, service areas. Angie, what made you and Dave uh, choose to, to write a study on the, the book of James? Well, uh, there's actually not one specific reason. 
James covers a full gamut of topics that are applicable to every single person's everyday life. We are sure that all of your listeners have experienced deep sorrow due to trials, and like us, they've all wrestled with the overwhelming pull of temptation, and, and how many of your listeners in their churches struggle with things like partiality and favoritism without even realizing it. And uh, we each deal with things like conflict at one time or another, and the book of James is a wellspring of wisdom on how to control the powerful tongue that can get us into so much trouble during conflict and outside of conflict. And, and those are only just a few of the highlights that are brought to us in the book of James. So it just seemed to be a wonderful starting place for us in writing our Bible studies because it's just so applicable to every person's everyday life. We are visiting with Angie Smith and David Vitt. They together are the founders of As I Am Ministries. And uh, Dave, before we go any further in the interview, is there a website as if someone is hearing us discuss the uh, the ministry as I am ministries, they would like to learn more uh, they can visit? You bet there is, Greg. That's www.asiamministries.org. Okay. Now, obviously, Dave, the uh, ministry as I am ministry is is kind of unique because not only do you have Bible studies, that are geared for women, but you also have ones that are geared for men. That makes it very unique. Whose idea was that, Dave? I have to give credit to Angie on that one. That uh, was definitely her idea, one that I quickly got on board with, because, you know, after editing the original study, I knew what was in there was fantastic, and I was really, really excited when she brought up the idea of considering adapting it uh, for men, so I, I was happy to do that. And having the corresponding books just seems to really open up so many options. For instance, a women's group can do it entirely on their own if there's no men's group doing it with them. Alternately, uh, men's groups can do it without the women doing it. But the really neat thing about our study and the option that it brings is for both of them to do it together if desired. Uh, for example, just last fall in our own church, Angie was leading a group of women through the women's version of the study, while at the same time, but in a different room, I was leading a group of men through the men's version. And then later, uh, on their own, couples had the opportunity to discuss what they had learned um, and hold one another accountable for what they learned. But during class time, I wasn't asking men to be vulnerable in front of their wives or in front of other women. Um, so that's one option. Now, we know other groups uh, choose to have the men and women sit together and, and do the study together, and that's perfectly acceptable. Um, just an endless number of possibilities of uh, having both versions available. Obviously, uh, as you just described, there are many, many benefits uh, of that uh, type of approach. Uh, how is this type of approach uh, a version for women, a version for men? How has that been received uh, beyond the confines of people that you come in contact with on a regular basis? Well, from the feedback we've received, Greg, uh, it's been received very well. Um, you know, the, the theology in each version is identical. So men and women are learning the same things at the same time, and it's just the illustrations that we've changed to try to make it more gender-specific. And from what we've heard, uh, the feedback has been very, very good. Angie, as you open the book, there's a fascinating illustration about a drive that uh, was taken on an icy winter day. Share that story with us and how that relates to the book of James. Yeah, well, uh, a few years ago, I was driving along and, and something profound hit me, and it just became the opening for this Bible study. And, and this is the story. I store storms are just very common occurrences during Missouri winters, and that happens to be the setting for this story. It's one of those ice storms where every individual blade of grass was covered with ice, every fence, every tree, every branch. And the morning after this storm, I had to drive to the store, and while I cautiously navigated the ice-covered street, I noticed one particular line of trees spectacularly gleaming as the sun glistened off the ice-laden branches. It was breathtaking, and I really, truly found myself praising God for the beauty of his creation while I began my drive. 
Well, after reaching my destination and finishing my business there, I began my drive back home, and I was an anxious to experience the beauty of these trees again. But when I turned down the very same street, the beauty I had just been praising God for was gone, and now the only thing reflected in these trees was the heavy burden of the ice, the devastation of the broken limbs, and the dim, dreary shadows all around. And I was just so saddened that the very beauty that I had just beheld an hour before was now replaced with darkness and gloom. I came to the end of the street, and at the stop sign, I decided to turn my head for one more look. And to my amazement, the trees were once again ablaze with light, but this time seeming more spectacular than they did earlier in the day. And it was right then that it hit me. The only thing that had changed had been the direction from which I was coming from. The only thing that had changed was my perspective and which side of the trees I was looking at. As it all soaked in, it became the perfect illustration for setting the stage for our study on James. Immediately in James, he tells his readers to count it all as joy when they suffer various trials. And that statement is so unnatural to our human nature. And for many people, that statement can actually be maddening. But just as these trees were broken and heavy laden and burdened beyond their own strength, it only took a change of perspective to see that the very ice that burdened them was also enhancing their beauty beyond measure. It just depended on which side of the trees I chose to look. We're visiting with Angie Smith and David Vitt, the co-founders of As I Am Ministries. Angie, who came up with the name As I Am Ministries? Actually, that was Dave. <laughs> so I will pass that off to him for a second. Tell us so, about that, Dave. Tell us how you came up with the name. I really like this part of the story, to tell you the truth. I had been teaching Sunday school for many, many years, and about halfway through, about seven years ago, uh, Angie and Brett uh, walked into our classroom, and, you know, while I held the position of teacher, I've got to, I've got to be honest with you. I, I learned more from Angie Smith being in my classroom than I think I was ever able to teach her. And I say that uh, because she actually helped me become a better teacher through her own command of Scripture, her familiarity with lexicons, uh, commentaries, just anything that uh, she already knew she was willing to share with me. And as a result of her building into my life, I became a better teacher. And once I found out that she had been called a number of years prior to a writing and teaching ministry, I was absolutely all in, and um, I wanted to do anything I could to fan that flame um, in, into something huge. So, uh, As I Am Ministries was my attempt to say Angie Smith imparting Abba's message. Uh, that's all it meant, but she wouldn't hear of it, uh, so she she <laughs> redefined it. <laughs> that's actually very true. Honestly, when Dave first approached me with the name, I knew that it was the right name. I knew that As I Am Ministries was the right name for our ministry because I was so grateful that God was willing to use me, to use us, just as I am, just as we are. But I really couldn't stand it being an acronym that represented my name because I don't want our ministry to be about me. I don't really want anything to just be about me. It's all about God. So as I poured over it, my first request was that if we kept the name the way it was, I wanted to make sure that the words I am were in full capitals and the letters A-S were, were lowercase because I just couldn't bear to have any part of my name capitalized next to the great I am. <laughs> but even that didn't really settle with me. So one day it hit me. I'm a servant. I'm a servant of the great I am. And I'm no greater of a servant than anyone else. So we decided that the as, the A-S in as I am, would stand for a servant. And that it would not only represent me, but that it would represent all of those who serve our great God. And then finally we kept the as, the A-S, as a lowercase, and the I am capitalized hoping to represent our, our relationship as servants of the Almighty. We are small servants walking side by side with the great I Am. It's little us, big God, working side by side for His glory. We're visiting with Angie Smith, David Vitt of As I Am Ministries, and uh, 
Uh, Dave, changing perspectives seems to be a major theme in your study. In fact, in, in that light, I see that you say in your book that we may miss out on the joy that God has in mind for us if our perspectives concerning trials aren't correct. Tell us exactly what you mean by that. So, Greg, you know, uh, trials are inevitable for all of us. Uh, we're either in the middle of one or heading into one or just coming out of one. They eventually get us all, and we really, how we look at them is going to impact how we see our way through it. And we can either shake our fists in the face of God and be angry at Him, or we can see our trials as tools in the hands of a loving God. Um, but without that right perspective, we may be tempted to blame God for our suffering. And yet we know that's not true. The example of Christ shows us that suffering really plays no favorites and knows no bounds. Um, so as we go through suffering, we can be assured that God understands them. He absolutely understands. And it's during those most vulnerable moments that if we will still ourselves, we may hear God's voice most clearly. But if we're fighting and resisting against him, boy, we're going to miss it every time. And not only that, we're not going to find joy in this life if we find ourselves fighting against God, even in our trials. Dave, you also make a very emphatic statement that a believer's request for wisdom will always be met with a loving yes. Tell us, uh, tell our listeners, actually, uh, how you can say that. Well, it doesn't matter what Dave says, but Scripture actually says that we can count on that. It says there are two things that uh, we can ask for and know with assurance that God's answer will be yes. And one of those is that those who call on the name of the Lord will be saved. Acts 2 tells us that. And James 1 in verse 5 says that those who come to God seeking wisdom during a trial will indeed receive it. Um, but many of us may miss it because we're not looking for his answer in the way he might want to be giving it to us. Many of us think that uh, wisdom from God is what will lead us out of that trial, when instead it, it might simply be what God wants to show us to help us endure during the middle of it. So his answer to our request for wisdom is always yes, but if we're looking for it to be a way out, we may simply miss it. We're visiting with David Smith, and, uh, or actually Angie Smith and, and David Vitt. We're talking about a very unique Bible study uh, with the book of James entitled James, Living a Life of Faith, with a men's and women's version, and of course uh, all this through As I Am Ministries. And Angie... What other ways does the book of James encourage us to change our perspective? Well, James challenges us to change our perspective concerning the use of our tongue, our words. We may tend to take our words lightly when in reality each word has the potential to have tremendous impact, positive or negative, on the people all around us. Uh, it challenges, to, challenges us to change our perspective on our relationships with others, the way we handle conflict, the way we handle favoritism, and definitely our demeanor of gentleness, uh, to change our perspective that gentleness is not weakness, but that it is strength under control, just the way that Jesus handled it. Um, it, it also challenges us to change our perspective on the way we live our lives in full. Our lives, people are always watching us. We are always influencing others, and if our perspective is that we realize that, then we will live our lives differently, knowing that others are watching and learning because our lives teach. It's also important for us to gather understanding about the way we, or change our perspective about the way that we approach God's Word. The Word of God is alive and active. It's sharper than any two-edged sword, and we have to come to it prepared for it to change our lives. And we have to have the perspective when we come to the Word that it can do it and that we're going to allow it. And that's just the tip of the iceberg on what James uh, addresses concerning our perspective. Angie and Dave, we're down to our last couple of minutes, but I have a question I'd like to ask both of you. We'll start with Angie. Uh, you can answer first. Other than Bible studies, Angie, uh, what other types of writing are you involved in? The other writing that we do is we provide daily devotions uh, via two different means. Our Facebook page that can be found through our website uh, publishes our daily devotions every day. And there's also a spot on our 
website where you can subscribe to receive those daily devotions via email. Dave, do you do any other uh, type of writing besides uh, stuff that uh, Angie mentioned? Well, the, um, I, I do contribute to the daily devotions. The, the other thing that As I Am Ministries does as a Bible teaching ministry is we look for almost any opportunity that allows us to teach God's Word. Um, so writing's part of it, but we're also available to speak at uh, women's retreats uh, and men's conferences, breakfasts, other events. Any group that wants a lesson from Scripture, we are game to consider that. Um, we both also teach Bible studies at our local church, and um, I will do pulpit supply uh, on an as-needed basis in our local area. So any opportunity that uh, we have to teach God's Word, we are all about it. And, and contacting uh, uh, you or Angie for those uh, type uh, things, uh, teaching at uh, different retreats and events can all be handled through the website, is that correct? That's correct. Uh, and again, www.asiamministries.org. Okay, one more question before we get to the most important part of the program. That's an opportunity for those that uh, are hungry for the Lord to give their life to the Lord. We want to just find out uh, other ways that our listeners who would like to get involved could do so if they wish. Either one of you are welcome to answer that question. Okay, again, uh, through visiting the website, uh, folks can sign up um, for our daily devotion. But if you're in the Kansas City area, uh, you can get involved with some of our local outreaches. Uh, we participate in what's called Camp Concedo, um, which is an inner city ministry that gives the children an opportunity to spend a week in a Christ centered uh, camp uh, situation. Uh, outside of Kansas City, you can sure support us through your prayers or even financially. Um, donations, uh, should we receive them, will help cover the costs of maintaining our website. Uh, we also maintain a, a community garden that uh, people in the Kansas City area can uh, get involved with. But uh, donations, should we receive them, will help cover the expenses of shipping um, and the cost of materials when we're asked to send copies of the James Study internationally, which we've done a few times before. Again, all that uh, and more is available through the website at www.asiamministries.org. As we mentioned at the beginning of the program, we were going to give our listeners that are ready to devote their life to the Lord to serve Him with all their heart, all their might, all their soul, the opportunity to do so. Would uh, Angie, would you be willing to lead our listeners in a word of prayer that are ready to surrender all? Yes. Well, if there's anyone listening that hasn't accepted Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, I do want to give an opportunity for that right now. Because we were created by a God who loves us so very much. And He loves us so much that He wants to be able to spend eternity with us, us with Him. But there's a problem. He is perfectly just and holy, and being so, He can't be in the presence of anything sinful. And unfortunately, we were all born with a sin nature, and we've all acted on that nature. And because of that, our lives are stained with sin, and the penalty for that is the inability to spend our eternity in His presence. But because of His great love for us, He did something to take care of this. The only way the penalty for our sin can be removed is if a perfect and holy sacrifice was made, and the only one fit to pay that price was Jesus Christ, God's perfect Son, and that is just exactly what He did when He came to earth to die on the cross. And when He did, His blood paid the price for our sins, and He conquered death, and He rose again, and now He is seated in heaven with God the Father. And this provided a gift for us a way to spend eternity with Him in heaven if we ex accept His gift. In order to do this, we have to acknowledge the sin in our life, confess it to Him with a willingness to turn away from it, and make Him the Lord of our lives as we have faith that the price He paid for us is sufficient to cover it. So now, this is the prayer prayed in order to accept that gift. God in heaven, I come to you in the name of Jesus, I acknowledge to you that I am a sinner, and I am sorry for my sins and the life that I have lived. I need your forgiveness. I believe that your only Son, Jesus Christ, shed his blood on the cross and died for my sins, and I am now willing to turn from my sin. 
You said in your word that if we confess the Lord our God and believe in our hearts that God raised Jesus from the dead, we will be saved. Right now, I confess Jesus as the Lord of my life. With my heart, I believe that God raised Jesus from the dead. I accept Jesus Christ as my own personal Savior. Thank you, Jesus, for your unlimited grace, which has saved me from my sins. Transform my life so that I may bring glory and honor to you alone and not myself. Thank you, Jesus, for dying for me and giving me eternal life with you. Amen. Our guest on Second Chances has been... Angie Smith and David Vitt, co-founders of As I Am Ministries, and we've been talking about the Bible study for men and women, both versions, James living a life of faith, and uh, David, one more time, the website if one would like to learn more. www.asiamministries.org And we'd like to thank both of you for being a guest here on Second Chances. Thank you. Thank you, Greg. You're welcome. Tune in next week for more Second Chances from Advantage Radio Ministries on Lyft FM.